Well, Mickey Mantle is a legendary figure in the game of baseball. There are countless stories about Mantle's exploits on the field and off, but it would be a friendship with fellow Yankee Bobby Richardson that would bring about a happy ending to this story and give Mantle peace at the end of his life. Former New York Yankee second baseman Bobby Richardson played alongside many of baseball's greats, but it was Mickey Mantle who first showed him the ropes. He said, come over here, kid. I don't think he even knew my name at that time. He said, I'm going to make like I'm showing you around Yankee Stadium, and I promise you there'll be a photographer over here in just a minute, and you'll be headlines in the paper tomorrow. He came over, and he was pointing like this and that, showing me the stadium. Three or four photographers came over like that, and the next day had our picture in the paper, and we became long, long friends. A strong Christian himself, Bobby always made it a point to invite Mantle to the team's chapels. I said, Mickey, Mickey, uh, we're having chapel in such and such a room at such and such time. He said, oh, you know me, I'll be out late last night. I probably won't even be up. He'd come in the next day, have his suit on and be right there. And we just had a great relationship. Away from the diamond, Bobby and his wife Betsy were close with the mantles. They shared a vacation home together and always took the opportunity to share their faith. But I remember that he was to get on a helicopter and fly to Charlotte and from Charlotte elsewhere. The weather was real bad and he looked over at Betsy and he said, Betsy, let's you and I and Bobby go and read the scriptures and let's have prayer together before I get on that helicopter. Even after their playing days ended, Mantle and Richardson remained close. Mickey even offered up his help when Bobby was the head coach at the University of South Carolina. He came down and gave a betting exhibition. This was one year after he retired. I don't think he'd do that for anybody. And then he signed about 100 bets. And one more time, we talked about the need to say yes to Christ and receive his Savior. Mickey battled alcoholism for most of his life and endured the loss of two of his children. But even after getting sober and getting his life on track, he still longed for something more. There was a poignant interview on national television where Bob Costas interviewed Mickey Mantle. And Mickey Mantle went on to say how he'd been through Betty Ford, he didn't drink anymore. And then it took so much courage for him to do what he did next. He, in front of a television audience nationally, said, I haven't been a good husband, I haven't been a good father. And he said, I'm no hero. And then he said, but I still have a void in my heart. But that void would soon be filled as all those seeds Bobby had planted over the years finally began to take root. My phone rang at five o'clock in the morning. It was Mickey. Betsy answered the phone and Mickey said, Betsy, I'm really hurting. I'm waiting for a liver transplant at Baylor Medical Center. I'm in the midst of chemotherapy. I want Bobby to pray for me. And I remember that um, I got on the phone and I shared a verse with Mickey. It's Philippians 4, but I use a Phillips translation. It says, delight yourself in the Lord. Find your joy in Him at all times. Never forget His nearness. And then it says, tell God in detail your problems, your anxieties. And the promise is the peace of God which passeth all understanding, shall keep our hearts and minds as we rest in Christ Jesus. Betsy went out and spent the next two days with Merlin, his wife, and Mickey and I visited together. Wasn't too long after that, a couple weeks perhaps, and the call came. He'd taken a turn for the worse. Cancer had come up in the transplant that he had. And, uh, his family wanted Betsy and I to come and be with him. I remember that we got on a plane and uh, immediately I wanted to be bold one more time because I wanted him to spend eternity with me in heaven. And then I let Betsy off at the home we were staying in in Dallas and went to Baylor Medical Center. Three of his teammates had just left. and I remember walking in, he had a smile on his face. And he said, come over here, I can't wait to tell you this. He said, I want you to know I'm a Christian. I've accepted Christ as my Savior. I remember crying a little bit and then I said, Mickey, let me go over it with you just to make sure you understand. And I went over God's plan of salvation, that He loves us and sent His Son, the Lord Jesus, to shed His precious blood and promised in His Word that if we would repent of our sin and receive Him as Savior, we might indeed have everlasting life. He said, that's just what I've done. But to see Mickey in that new spirit of having a, a peace, he told the doctors he was ready to go. He just had a peace that you couldn't believe in those days. And that was the thrill of my life. If I had to say, what's your big thrill in baseball? It was seeing the peace that Mickey Mantle had during those last days. What a story of persistence. You know, Bobby Richardson constantly planting those seeds. You know, so many times I think 
maybe in our minds we say, you know what, that person, they're too far gone. They're not interested in the gospel. They would never come around and become a Christian. This would never interest them. But it's not about what we think. It's, in the end, it's about what God thinks and what his plan is. And Bobby Richardson just kept after him and kept after him. And every chance he got to witness to him, he did. And in the end, Mickey Mantle was saved before, before he died. And, and what a great story of faith and of persistence on Bobby Richardson's part. Yeah, and I love that he said at the end his top moment in sports yeah. was that, that Mickey Mantle he came had a lot to of great Christ ones. and it shows it's about relationships at the end of the day. Absolutely.